My name is Rick Bo Cook, also known as Harp Man Hatter, and I've been doing uh, the street music thing here in Spokane for a little over three years now. And I started doing it when I got into job problems, and I wanted to go out on the streets and instead of panhandling, play music and see what happens from there. How long have I been in Spokane? Well, I was born and raised in 1957 in Hilliard. And I was away from Spokane for like maybe three, four years out of my life, you know, but I've been here most of my life. One of the things that started me on the street music scene was like, um, it has a lot to do with my experience like in bars. See, I started playing in the bars like in 78 and 79. See, in, in Spokane, um, they had one of the biggest railroad yards in the United States. It was Great Northern, and they used to build trains there a long time ago. And right now they're building a freeway there, but that was, it was a, like a railroad town. They had more bars there than any other place in town. Now, they, don't have, they probably have about three bars there, but at one time they had about 15. So, so Hilliard ended up having a lot of alcoholics. <laughs> of all those bars. You get kicked out of one bar, you get to go to another one over and over again. So, so it's pretty hard to get away from getting kicked out. I have three brothers and two sisters, and I have an ex-wife up here, and I have four children and uh, four grandchildren. And I help my, my daughter has a grandson, you know, and I help babysit once in a while. My dad has passed on. He worked for the railroad, it was Great Northern Railroad, then Burlington Northern for about 38 years. He retired and he built two log cabins up, one in Idaho and one in Montana. One still, they're both standing still. My mom is a country western piano player and she played uh, music in the 60s and all the people from the railroad would come over there and travelers, like people off the box cars and stuff like they'd come over there and listen to the music. And, and I, that's where I started getting my musical, uh, I would say, theory. So when I started picking up the harmonica, I noticed that uh, the music was in my head. When I got my first harmonica, I was 18. This person was playing harmonica, and I liked what, the way it sounded. You know, I never really been around somebody that played harmonica like that. And he told me, you know, a tradition that you don't sell harmonicas, you give them away because they're a very personal instrument. They're full of spit and slobber and all that other stuff. So you give them away. And I didn't, it took me about two or three months before I could actually play a song um, where I could actually play along with uh, on the radio. Because there wasn't very many harmonica songs out there unless you listen to the blues and they, you didn't get to listen to the blues. I mean, I, was, I didn't, wasn't doing very well when I was 18 or 19. Um, I didn't have my own radio, so I got to listen to other people's radios, and I listened to those songs. Plus, my mom's country and western uh, playing, um, I got to listen to a lot of country and western was in my head, you know. But I preferred the blues over the country and western, so it was it was really easy for me to pick up on it on those on that kind of music. Hey, we got my name, Tarp Man Hatter. I was going to make a MySpace page, and uh, I was trying to come up with a name for MySpace instead of my own name, and. Uh, I remember I was staying with my sister and her kids. <laughs> they were they were below teenagers, you know. They kind of like had a problem with me sometimes because I'd see them do something wrong, you know, and I'd get on their case about it. So I just thought about calling myself Wicked Uncle, but then there was too many other people called Wicked Uncle, so I said, "Well, I ain't gonna use that name." And I was wearing a top hat that's shorter than this one, and I says, "I says, well, how about if I call myself because I'm a heart man and then Hatter, like the Mad Hatter." Of course, some people will call me the Mad Hatter, and then I make my little story about, no, I'm not the Mad Hatter, I'm his son. The Mad Hatter is my dad, and Alice is my mom. That's what I'm saying. And so that's basically how I got the name Heart Mad Hatter, was, was just doing it on the uh, MySpace. And, it, and it's a name that I made up, and it's, it's working pretty good. It's, it's an original name. Well, on the streets, yeah, I have what I call a moving audience. And what happens with a moving audience is that they're constantly moving and you end up getting a fan base, kind of like that um, out here, just as much as the ones that are playing in the clubs. You know, just as many people get to know you out here on the streets as they do in the clubs. And these are people that you will never see in a club. So 
this is something that I, I was able to promote this instrument, the harmonica on the streets, so that people get to have an exposure of it, playing by itself, amplified, and get to hear different kinds of music that they would probably never hear on the radio. They had a lawsuit at the Spokane Transit over a First Amendment issue, and so you didn't have to have a license or a permit. So I started going there, and the security told me that I couldn't play my music there, so I went to Center for Justice, and this took like six months, and finally Center for Justice went and got, got it in with the um, Spokane Transit that any musician can go out there and play music without permits. Well, I decided I wanted to get a permit, so I got a permit, and then I found out about the permits that they were a, vend they were a vendor's license. And what happened there was on the vendor's license, it says that if a business doesn't like you being there, they can ask you to move. So I had to go through all these businesses and ask if I could play in front of their business, and every one of them said no, except Macy's. Macy's was really open to uh, letting people play out by their whole strip there, which is a, like a whole block. <clears throat> and as time went by, I noticed that the vendor's license, I wanted to play other places, and I didn't like it, and I started studying constitutional law and noticed that uh, the permit scheme was unconstitutional. So I had a meeting with the city attorney and the police department and the city treasurer, and I told them I was not no longer gonna get a permit because it was against the constitution. And I started carrying me a little flyer from a lawsuit in Philadelphia, which says um, the ability to play a musical instrument or seeing in a public place and solicit funds are forms of expression protected by the First Amendment. I started carrying that with me. So whenever the police come by, I'd throw that one on me. Well, they harassed me um, with another friend of mine last year in June. And they told, well, you don't have a permit. So they did this in front of Center for Justice, which is a legal organization here. And they witnessed it. And from that time, we got, I got involved with Gonzaga University. And we got this on the, um, in front of city council. In, and then November they passed a law where a musician did not have to have a license or permit. This has been going, this license and permit scheme was like over 30 years. So it's gone. And that's, that's one of the things that I, I stand up for. And all the interviews I've read about, uh, when a person comes to that awareness, is like the people that have stood up for the First Amendment. They, they even say, it's like, if you're in position, you know, it's your responsibility. Actually, you're standing up for other people. And that's what I do. I'm standing up for other people. It's one of the hardest things to get people convinced of is uh, it's not about me. That's one of the hardest things to get them convinced of. Because if you're standing out there, that's what they see. They say, oh, this is all about you, but it's not about me. When you get a law change, it's, that's not easy to do. You kids want to say hello before before you walk away? You want to say hello? Come over and say hello. On this microphone. Come here. You say hello. I'm going to turn it way up. Say hello, Spokane. Hello, Spokane. <laughs> you want to say hello? Say hello, Spokane. Not hello, Spokane. You say hello then. Hello. All right. Nice try.